All right, so it is Monday, June 6, 2022, and you know what today is? Today is my son's 21st birthday. Ba-boom, all right? So mom made him a little daiquiri. <laughs> little one. All right, that's it. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right into the weekly assignments. Um, I'm also going to remind you, okay, again, here's your, uh, your CT2, June Wednesday, June 8th. That is two days away, okay? It's not that hard to do. Um, what I'm going to uh, suggest you to do is just um, read the directions. Again, to, uh, you're going to select the U.S. and two different countries. One of them is going to be what? A developing country. Where are the? Oh, here's the developing countries. Choose one of these guys, okay? Um, all righty. And, um, and yes, China's on there because such huge segments of China is, is way out there removed and separated from their, their technology uh, thick cities and urban centers. OK. All right. So um, what else do I want, to, I want you to do? Right here, I have a slide deck. So I'll just pull this thing up. OK. All right. Slide deck. Up here. Somewhere. Finding my PDF file here. There it is. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's a step by step thing. Okay. So, critical thing one, uh, and what I did is I, I, you know, I have all these different um, uh, components that are present when you're there. Okay. So, we're going to go to the next slide. Um, this tells you some, some background on things, okay, that you can use for the writing. All right. Um, and then you just add a country. You go right into the website and you add a country. All right. Um, you pick and choose what you're going to do, okay? Um, uh, this is life expectancy right here, okay? So we can look at that, okay? And we scroll down here, okay? And this is the, the screen you're going to get. You click on these guys to get rid of them, and then you click on what you want to, to include them, all right? All righty. And so there I was. I did Afghanistan, United States, and Greece. And you can see the huge disparity. And you can also see um, changes in record keeping and things like that, okay? Again, just follow the green and red arrows. They're going to tell you exactly how to navigate that. All right, cool. All right. Um, so um, you're supposed to take screenshots, okay? So this is the PC method, okay? So it's Windows key, Shift, S all at once. And when you do that, then you're able to capture the, 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 the image that you want, and you can then paste it um, into the document that you're creating, okay? This is the, uh, the Mac uh, screen capture method. Uh, I don't know anything about it because I don't have a Mac. All right. Um, part two, okay, we're, we're looking at the whole issue of working age, okay, and the distribution of dependents, okay, and that's what, basically what you're going to look at, and you can look at the shifts that happen here over time, we're going from 1950 to 2100, and um, I mean, are there changes in, in the relative distribution, okay, on a, on a percentile basis of the working age population, for the country you choose, so you're going to get one, two, and three countries, the same ones you did before. You put them in uh, in documents and you talk about it. So what do we have here? Uh, this one, I'm looking at Japan. This one, I'm looking at Afghanistan. And here, I'm looking at the United States. All right. So I changed it up. All right. But you should use the same countries. All right. Um, and you get the percentile basis. Okay. Um, talks about a 221 right here, the here and now. Okay. So this was from last year. And... Um, and you can see that the transition is happening where the, the, the number of, uh, on a percentile basis, of, of dependents are getting more and more elderly here in Japan compared to where they were here, less children. This is a great analysis. And then you, um, in terms of social services, you uh, anticipate this and you, and you uh, adjust. Okay. Again, this is just a blow up of the same thing. All righty, cool. Um, um, uh, right here. Okay. Um, uh, again, we're looking at the age structure and it tells you what to do. All right, so that's what that, that's all about. I just wanted to kind of show you guys that. Um, you can also watch my YouTube right here that I did um, last semester. Um, it still applies, okay? And so I'm just going to pull it up right now. And um, sorry for the little, you know what? I got I to redo my ad block, okay? But it's a how-to right here. I'm going to skip ads, okay? And there it is. It's me again. Um, so what I'm going to do in this short, I promise you, very short video, it's guide it's you me how to do talking your to first me. writing assignment. Awesome, cool. So just watch that video and explain everything you need to do. Awesome. All right, that's that's where we're at right now. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to now take us to this next assignment for this week. So this would be assignment two for week three. Okay. So we're going to scroll down here. We're going to wake week three. And here it is, man. So it's it's actually assignment eight because it's the second assignment of this week. We did three, we did three, and now we're doing number two. All right. Um, 
when we looked at last assignment, okay, the one I just did um, uh, on Sunday, and we were looking at um, Alzheimer's disease, again, as this potential burden to society, but to you as well. And that was the whole point of the discussion. And that was looking at caregivers for demented patients. And it's kind of some scary stats that we went over last time, all right? Um, and uh, we provided, you know, you basically were going to create a, um, a, a program that's going to recognize the help that caregivers need um, uh, financially and um, in terms of their psychological well-being. And then I referred you to this facility that we have here at the Davis School where they provide guidance in, the, in these issues. All right, so that was the whole point of that. And now we're going to actually <clears throat> go in deeper. That was an example. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're going to go in deeper to the whole topic care of caregiving. This video is going to go right in here, guys, just like always. Um, and just like always, I recommend that uh, before you start anything, you open a second window or a second browser and you open the quiz and you just kind of go back and forth as you're marching through this, okay? All righty. So this is a good document you're going to read. This reading is in support of a lot of the imagery that we've provided here, all right? So you're going to see this, this very graphic in the article on a different scale, but it's the exact same data, okay? And um, so we're looking at um, the, the, the number of people that can take care of an elder. All right. So this is what's called the caregiver support ratio. All right. And it can be your immediate family. All right. You and your brothers and sisters, your siblings and caring for your parents. OK. So um, if you have two parents. OK. And you have um, uh, four siblings and you kind of divide it up. OK. It can be extended out to, to the community. But in the reality, th through the analysis that has been done, <clears throat> You can see the runaway train that's happening right here. So here we are right here. Um, this was 2010. And you can see already by 2022 that things are changing. Okay. So the number, you know, people that were giving the care, like I did to my mom and to my dad, are now we're entering into that age group that we're going to start needing the care. I'm younger. I'm 66, but I have an older brother. He's 76. Still dialed in, doesn't need care. But you know what? It could happen, all right? So uh, in their analysis, we're seeing that um, as time progresses, okay, there's going to be fewer and fewer people, and that's what this is all about here. We see it graphically, and then we see it uh, right here in terms of verbs. Again, it's kind of the shock and awe. There were seven potential caregivers, okay, from the community that would, of, of, of your, both your regular family and your logical family that could help in the care of an individual, one person that needs services, okay? In 2030, that's declined to four to one, and then in 2050, it'll be three to one. So that just means that um, it's a serious, serious burden placed on fewer shoulders, okay? And it is a serious burden, my, God, my friends. All right, so um, per your discussion last week in policy, how are we stacking up as a country, all right? So caregiving, how do we stack up globally, okay? And we see right here in terms of government services for long-term care in terms of our health, OK, so you need somebody to come by and you need somebody to help you administer medicine, need somebody to do occupational physical therapy, help you transition to a mode that we need a lot more services. Um, we see this uh, long term um, health care. That's the orange bar compared to all these other countries. We're 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 racing to the bottom. OK, so, you know, our country is basically in terms of health care. Is especially this type of care that is not covered uh, by uh, Medicare and things like that, um, you know, you're, it's totally up to you. And if you haven't saved, you're in a world of hurt, okay? Even worse, there's social care, okay? We, we know that loneliness is um, causes, a, causes a precipitous decline in health. And, um, and uh, so a big way to, to fight that and remedy that is just to have – this long-term social component where people will come by, they'll talk to you, um, keep you company, make you feel part of your own unique social network again. And the, this is ever present in a lot of countries, but not in ours. You see this, this light yellow, so you see dark yellow, and uh, dark orange, or light orange, or, or a yellow. You see, we don't even register. We don't have anything, okay? All righty. 
So we're not stacking up very good, are we? Okay. And then what, the other one is how about child care? And I just threw that in just to show you that we just, we're just a country that does not provide the social services to um, the dependents in terms of this concept of, um, of the, the dependency ratio. So kids and grandma and grandpa that are totally dependent on you, we could have a little societal push to help but not in the United States, okay? You're totally on your own, all right? And so we can look over here. This is child care support services. And if you look real closely, it's the amount of money, annual public spending per child on early childhood care, okay? The most critical time in human development is when you are in preschool and kindergarten, all these times, okay? After school care. And um, you see here, for example, in Norway, they spend almost $30,000 a year towards each child which is phenomenal, okay? Yes, they have higher taxes, but they have worked it out. And then where, where does the United States stack? We're all the way down here at $500, okay? Next to nothing. All right, so that's a big issue to think about politically. All right, so um, we're gonna talk about up here, the, the healthcare that, that, that we're hoping to receive, okay? The compassionate care to get us through these really difficult years when we get older, okay? Obviously, the government's not going to pitch in, all right? So, however, the expectation that we have when we get older is we're going to get some type of care, okay? So most, when we look at how it all plays out, we look at older Americans receive care in their own homes, the majority. And if I talk about it right here, so 76% um, uh, um, receive care in their own homes, okay? Uh, we have... Uh, we could also have it through a friend or family member's home, senior committee, communities, and nursing homes, okay? So this is a big deal right here, okay? So, all right, so this is people that's receiving the overall care. Who's, um, where is this going to happen, okay? Uh, and in terms of the caregiver, where, where do they stand in terms of delivering the care to this older person that needs it, okay? And we see that um, the biggest majority, this may be a shocker, as I've talked about this kind of multi-gen, <clears throat> multi-generation housing, we see that <clears throat> the older person moves in with the caregiver or maybe they've always had the multi-gen housing. But ultimately, um, because of cost, okay, because of need, uh, what happens is grandma or grandpa is going to move in with you. And we see this is 44% of the time, okay? Uh, the, the, the close second in at 33% of the time is you're visiting the aged loved one on a routine basis to make sure they're getting care. They could be um, living in somebody else's home. They have these shared elder care community homes, okay? We have nursing homes and senior senior communities, okay? So that's how it all plays out right there. All right, so let's get to the skinny here. A cost. What are, the, what are the direct costs to your father, your mother, your grandma, your grandpa, um, in terms of having care delivered to them? Okay. All righty. So um, the, uh, the Medicare, okay, doesn't pay for assisted living costs. Okay. Bottom line. All right. So you can, you know, certainly invest in a long-term care policy, you have to do that when you're really young and they, they dig in their heels in terms of services. It is what it is. Okay. But you, you know, right now I'm too old. I can never invest in it. They would, they would, my premium would be a hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that. So they want to collect their money out of me because I invested in when I was 30, 40, 50 years of age. And then when it comes time to, Hey, um, I need care. Um, then it's going to be iffy in terms of getting it delivered, and they don't want to give up the money. It is, it's a crappy business model, okay? So, irrespective of that, how much is it going to cost you, right? So, so um, you don't have a long-term care um, uh, 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 policy. Medicare doesn't cost us. What, what is your monthly out-of-pocket going to be for care, all right? So, we see um, if you're living in a nursing home, you're looking at, yes, you see here, um, we'll just call it $8,000, okay, a month. All right, so you you start approaching a hundred grand a year, okay? Um, how about if you're living in a an assisted living facility? Assisted living facility means you're still doing pretty good. Here in a nursing home, you need help with every single what is called activity of daily living. You know, brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, showering, all these kind of things. You know, um, feeding yourself. You know, all this. so you need a lot of help. Here, you're still kind of mobile, but you, um, 
you're 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 not as um, on top of things. So you can't really live at home anymore. All right. So that's why people um, will you know look to get an assisted living facility, so you can just be assisted in living the way you want to live. Okay. All righty. Um, and then you can have um, a, a, a part-time healthcare aide come to your house. Okay. Um, two hours every day. Okay. That's going to cost you about two thousand dollars a month. Okay, probably in today's world, it's it's inching up towards three uh, three thousand dollars a month minimum. Okay, that's a, a, again a significant amount of money. If you need more time, more ta- time with a person and you're at home, it's going to go up. Remember, the person next door to me that lives right over there, four hundred dollars a day is what they needed when they had a twenty four hour care. Okay, so what are the rules in terms of skilled nursing facilities? Okay. All right, so um, you want to get into this place right here because you're, you're coming out of a hospital stay, okay? And you're not quite on your feet yet, all right? So um, you have to, in order to qualify for Medicare to pay for your skilled nursing facility costs, and again, it's temporary, you have to have completed a three-day inpatient stay in the hospital, okay? All right, um, for a hospital-related medical condition. So this has to be a significant um, um, uh disease, injury, whatever it is that you have, okay? All right, so this is then what happens, okay? So you then pay in the nursing home. So what is the cost to you? For the first 20 days, okay, you're not going to pay anything, all right? That's what Medicare pays for, all right? Again, you have to have fit this criteria right here, okay? All right, then from days 21 to 100, all right? So you've gotten in 21 days, okay, for the next, not 80 days, but the next 79 days, okay? Um, you're going to have this copay of $185.50, um, okay? Not covered by Medicare, okay? Um, and then once you have extended, you're in a nursing facility, okay, and you've exceeded 100 days, guess what? It's 100% out of pocket, all right? Herein lies the madness, okay? All righty. And then... When we're looking at home health services, so you're going to say, I can't deal with this. I'm going to kick myself out of this, and I'm going to go to home health services, okay? We're going to ask ourselves, what does Medicare pay, all right? Medicare does not pay for these health homes. They do not pay for a 24-hour day care at home. They're not going to pay for meals delivered to your house. They don't care for the instrumental services like shopping, cleaning, laundry. You're on the hook for that as well, okay? So you can see why this is a big deal for you guys. And then, um, you know, again, this is the custodial services of assisting you breathing, dressing. Again, um, you're on your own there, all right? It's a lot to think about, all right? So all uh, that being said, now you have some perspective, okay? And you can go into the article uh, that um, supports this, okay? And, then, and you can kind of just breeze through this article. I know on the surface you're like, oh, no, not 12 pages. You just kind of, you don't have to, to um, get totally detailed on, in on this, okay? I promise you. All right, so let's check this thing out. All righty, so again, here's, you know, this kind of caregiver support ratio, exactly what we're talking about. And then, the, the, again, these are the numbers that we already showed you, right? So this it's a review, but it's in it's it's reading, because a lot of us are readers, okay? And so um, a lot of what I've talked about is um, these right here these long-term services and support that people need as they get older. So sadly, it's an acronym, you know, so just remember that it's long-term services and support, long-term care, it's all kind of the same vernacular, all right? All righty, so obviously the older you get, okay, um, the more you need in terms of these long-term services and support, okay? You're, I'm gonna leave a lot more assistance when I'm 80 than I do right now when I'm 66, you know? Right now, my sons are helping me in terms of doing, you know, we have a pool in the backyard, so they've taken over the pool responsibilities just so they can be dialed in in terms of taking, managing the estate, okay? All righty, cool. All right, so um, what do we got to do? So again, you guys, um, knowledge is power, okay? Anticipating change is key. Education about all this is key so that you can set yourself up as an individual and then also think about, God, big picture, you know, what are we going to do in society in, in 2030 and 2050, okay? Because we see that the, that the number of caregivers is going to um, uh, get flat and then decline, okay? And that's a big, 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 big deal, okay? Um, and, you know, especially people like me start moving into old age, okay? 
And um, here's the reality. You know, you, you ask your parents, okay, maybe during your interview paper, your grandparents, what their expectation is, okay? Um, over two thirds, you know, really approaching 70% of people in America believe that they can, that I'm gonna be able to rely on my kids to take care of me, you know? That's the expectation, you know? Is that your expectation? That's something you kind of have to think about, okay? All righty. Um, and then as fewer and fa fewer and fewer family members available, we have smaller families. What if, what if my son gets a job in Denver and moves to Denver? What am I supposed to do then, all right? So then we start have to looking at community-based services and the cost, all right? So uh, if, if my kids can't help me, then I'm gonna have to use my finances, my estate that they were previously gonna inherit to pay for my services, all right? So this is a big, big deal, all right? Okay, so um, then we, they go through the, you know, the economic models right here um, uh, in terms of measuring the future availability of caregivers and the impact that it's gonna have on people like you, okay? So I'm not gonna go through this, I just want you to read through it, okay? And then they, what they do is they, they, they compare these kind of cohorts, okay? They hone in on the caregiver ratio, again, and look at the transition from 1990 to 2010, 2010, to 2030 and then the future 2030 to 2050 okay and um, this information then supports this is that figure that I showed you previously that is on the the on the this section of our blackboard website and it's just a, a different graph that shows the same thing showing that we had um, here we had a lot of boomers around okay so a lot of us could help our parents from the great generation that was World War II era etc or slightly after that and um, and then uh, guess what happens? Okay, suddenly we have fewer children. Okay, which is the drill compared to our parents. We're starting to get in need of help. Okay, we are now dependent, but we didn't have enough kids, and so now the ratio that we see over here is declining, 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 and declining. And it's just going to get worse and worse over time. Falling the burden falling on your shoulders, your kids' shoulders. Okay. And that's what that's all that's all about. Okay, alrighty. And this is just kind of you know stuff you already know. These are demographics. Okay, the <clears throat> projected age to uh, 45 to 64 population. You see that it's just going up and up and up um, uh, over time. So it's just going to make up a um, a, a, a larger majority. This is uh, projected in terms of millions. Okay, you know it's crazy. You think right now we have what we have 300 and um, a little bit under 370 million people in our country, and suddenly we're gonna go from 40 million to 100 million people that are over the age of 65 in that age, or, or 45 to 65, I'm sorry. But you can see that the country's getting older, basically, okay? All righty, uh, so then they go over the support ratio, okay? Again, here's the increase in the over 80 population, going from uh, you know 1990 to 2020, we went from about six million to 2022 to about 15 million and then what are we going to do um you know when you guys are kind of a ripe age at 2050 so what are you guys right now you guys are 20 so you guys will be 70 years of age and you're going to see that the, the 80 old year old population is going to be 35 million compared to the you know, roughly um you know 14 million right now all right so th these are big big changes that the world is going to inherit okay all righty cool so that's that's the story on that guys um, and, you know, again, um, good luck with the critical thinking assignment. You can, you can send things our way. We can help you out on that. Um, it's, it's, it's not that hard. You guys are, you guys are good at this. You, and, and it gives you a chance to do a little bit of data mining in what is an incredible database that you can possibly use someday, um, you know, in the workplace, you know, where, um, your boss asks you to go get data on X, Y, and Z go to the World Data Bank. It's, it's phenomenal. It has everything you need. Economic projections, you know, society shifts, everything you would ever want, okay? All right, guys, um, then we come down here, okay? So you guys are experts in caregiving. And so then there's a short article that talks about cultural diversity, okay? And super important, our country, God, we, we come, you know, it's the United States of America. Uh, we embraced immigration for years and years and years. And uh, there is a dynamic, okay? Every culture has their expectation of support and caregiving, okay? Um, I, I've seen in your guys' uh, discussions already, um, 
how many of you um, are um, living in multi-generation households. And that is just the standard of the culture from where your parents and grandparents came from, okay? Um, and even within that, that there are differences. Um, um, you know, let's say we're all multi-geners. Um, there's big differences in the expectations by culture. And so you have to think about this because maybe as a business person, you're going to, you know, create a new, new whole new um, era of uh, care. And so you could, you could tailor your care to the different regions um, of Southern California that, that are reflective of unique demographics. Okay. So I grew up in Monterey Park. Uh, and so Monterey Park has a very uh, large Chinese American population. Okay. Um, uh, Glendale has a huge Armenian American population. Uh, we can look at Laguna de Gal and um, it's transitioning, but it's mostly people um, that are uh, a mix of white generations, uh, white people, okay? Um, so that being said, okay, um, how are you going to access your care and what your needs are? Social workers are the key. They're heroes, okay? They guide you through the morass, and it's a difficult, difficult um, kind of a layout that older people have a lot of trouble with in terms of god you know what where do i go to get help who do i hire to get help what what are the opportunities that are out there for help it's really confusing what does medicare cover all that's what social work workers are for okay and um so we we see social workers are really really important in terms of um um the assessment they do all right sadly they don't make a ton of money okay um and you're not going to be doing the care, but you're going to be the um, the advisor that will set people up with um, all kinds of, of, of help. OK, so um, so you refer the person to the best treatment center if they need medical help. You're going to um, have this this training. OK, um, that makes sure that you are licensed. OK. Um, you have a strong desire. You have to want to help people to take on this career, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to be, as a social worker, okay, you're going to be assessing every client's needs and, again, referring them to the services that they need, okay? So what type of social workers are there? So, yes, family services agencies. This is what I've been talking about all the way up to this point in time. Schools have social workers. Child protection services have social workers. Prisons have social workers, okay? You can work out of local health health and community centers. Every single hospital has a whole team of social workers that are gonna dispatch aid or set you up so that you can go directly into that nursing facility, right? So this, these case workers are super important. And then you can also just have private practice, okay? Um, and again, there are different government agencies. These are all the different types of career trajectories that you have. All right. So that being said, we we see all this. And so I want you to think about your future, America's future, and caregiving while answering the questions above. Okay. So we're going to go look at what those questions above are. There they are right now. Okay. Um, so uh, read through this and answer the questions. Okay. Um, for example, um, you know, what is the prospect of family support in this generation when they grow old, uh, old in the next several decades, okay? Um, will the current pattern of social support change? Is our government going to step in? Maybe the policy you wrote up, okay? How can the U.S. learn from the way things are done in other cultures? That's key. Remember those graphics. Remember your culture that you come from, okay? Um, and um, do we rely too much on outside help? Should we, should we have it more dialed in to our family or our communities that we will help each other. All right. So those are the key concepts as you're going through this. All right. All right. I, I bounced around a little bit right there, guys. I think we're done. Um, good luck. And we'll see you the next assignment.